Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do five rapid reviews for you. We have the Wear Knives Lucas P right here, production knife. We have the uh, Hogue slash Sig Sauer K320 right here. We have the Hogue Deca version 2 right here. We have the Kaiser Latbind right here. And lastly, we have the CJRB More Mylia. So, uh, real quick, I want to say that this one was loaned in by Corey over at Stafford ZDC. He has changed the name of his YouTube channel to match his Instagram. So, it is now Stafford's EDC on YouTube, linked below. These two hoags are loaned in by Knives Fast, my good buddy Casey. So check out Casey at Knives Fast. And these two, uh, I got this one as a loaner from WMK or White Mountain Knives. And this one I bought from White Mountain Knives. You guys can use code LEFTY10 at checkout there for 10% off and free shipping in the United States. So let's start off with the Lucas P. And we can kind of work our way down the line here. I don't know if I'm going to remember what order I had them in, but we can certainly try if anybody else is sort of OCD. All right. So, again, Lucas P. loaned in by Stafford GDC. I want to point out right away that I have bought one of these. Uh, I bought one off of my good buddy Jake over at Bearded Gear. And I'm going to try to have him send it directly to the knife modder so they can put the whole mod in it. So I want to get rid of these studs and put a hole in it. Um, again, this one right here is not mine, but uh, the one I bought off of Jake is. So um, this is an S35 VN steel, and that's something I want to talk about. I did reach out to Matt Ware. He is the guy behind Ware Knives, and I asked him, hey, man, a lot of people are talking about the steel choice. Um and I was curious why you went with it. And what he told me was uh, when he put the order in for these, he thought that S35, S30V uh, were very good steels that people really liked. So he chose S35VN. Uh, he is not a steel snob, and he obviously is not very uh, in tune with the production knife world. He's a custom maker, right? Which is fair. So he thought he chose an appropriate steel for the build. And he did. Uh, S35 is fine. I like S35. Now, people are complaining. They wish it was M390, blah, blah, blah. And he said uh, going forward on his version 2 or any future production knives, they will have M390. So it was literally just him choosing a steel that he thought was good. And he thought the community would be accepting of, and it just turned out that it was maybe a little bit below the normal standard, which, again, for me, not a big deal. I actually really like S35, so it's fine. Uh, I prefer to have some different steels and not have everything in M390, so... Um, I really have no issue with that. Uh, I did ask about the clip placement as well, but I have not received a response yet. Uh, obviously, the dude's busy, and this was today. So uh, I can't hold that against him. Uh, but the clip placement, the stock clip is a milled titanium clip, and it goes, uh, it starts right here, and you can see where that last screw is. So you're going to have about this much sticking out of your pocket uh, stock. So you can see why I put this clip on it. This is a ZT0450 clip from MXG Gear. And it fits pretty well. You can see the little cutout right here. It's not perfectly fit there. But the stock screws worked. Uh, they do stick out a little bit into the frame. I want to show you this so you are aware. You can see the screws down there. Let me get a flashlight for a little better look. <clears throat> So you see the screws down there, right? Now they do not contact the blade in any way. Let's see if I can show you that. They're not contacting the blade as much as it kind of looks like it. That's the shitty thing about angles. It's so hard to tell. But you can see right there. It's not touching it in any way. So I wanted to point that out. Um, and I wanted to talk about, obviously... 
the uh, clip. With this clip, it's great. I mean, you have just a little bit sticking out. It's much more manageable. This is basically how it should have been. I mean, there has to be a body screw under here somewhere for the backspacer, and I don't know why they couldn't have just used that and added a, a bottom screw, and then you would have been good. Uh, if I get an answer on that and I do another video about the knife once I get the modded one, maybe I'll mention it. But for now, I, I don't have an answer for the clip placement. It might have just been the way he does things, right? Whatever. Uh, to each their own. So let's get into the rapid review. Uh, aesthetically, this thing is gorgeous, guys. It really just strikes me. Uh, it gives me the fizz. Uh, it's just a really good looking knife it along with the Brian Brown Raptor just really do it for me I may do a battle with those two. We shall see I might wait until I get the modded one back the one that's mine um, But anyway, I love the inlay. I love the titanium finish. I love this acid wash uh, I normally don't but I really like it on this knife. It's much better than a coated blade to be honest um the bolster lock looks good. This clip does work pretty well with the overall build. I think at some point I'll send it to Lindy and Richie, the knife modders. That's who's going to do the uh, hole and maybe have them match it to the blade. Ooh, uh, have them match it to the blade. That would be pretty cool. Or the scales, whichever one, or the hardware, I mean, whichever one makes more sense. Um, so, yeah, I think it looks really good. The clip point is a very nice blade, really good uh, blade shape. Nice hollow grind. Ergonomically, this thing is super comfortable in my hand in this normal grip. I really, really enjoy holding it in this grip. And then I have a choke up point if I need to do anything um, like that. And then I do have good control in a pinch grip as well. Now, having that clip point, I don't get as much control down like this. So let's talk about cutting. Ergos are fantastic. Unless you have a giant hand, um, I think it's going to be good up to maybe an XL that might be pushing it. You could definitely ride up here with an XL, uh, but a large glove size hand, it's money guys, or smaller obviously. Um, so cutting, you're not gonna be able to just drop down and use that tip the way I want to. Flipping it over would work possibly, um, but it's good enough that you can get, you know, if I'm standing, I can get a pretty good angle and get down with the tip. Uh, for packages and stuff like that, very good for cutting. This hollow grind is very well done. It's not the thinnest hollow grind I've ever felt, but it's Riot. You know, this is an OEM project from Riot. Uh, it comes down to a pretty thin edge. It slices very well. Uh, sorry. Okay. It did slice very well until I made this video. <laughs> you know me, guys. I can't cut. And again, this is not my knife. Uh, this is Corey's, and I'm sure he's used it, you know, before I got it, and then I used it a little bit. Should not have been enough to do anything to the edge, um, but it does feel a little gritty. I think I said that in my first impression. So, uh, for what I've needed it for, have, hasn't been an issue. I don't go around shaving arm hairs or paper normally. Uh, cutting into packages, um, cutting shipping labels, and a couple of... Um, uh, cardboard boxes I had to cut down. Uh, mostly just cutting down the tape and cleaning off the edge. Um, it did fantastic. You guys know me, light use. So uh, check out another review for hard use information on this knife. Um, carry, again, we talked about the clip already. It's pretty good with this clip. I've enjoyed it. Now I carry in my back left pocket, I carry right handed knives there. So this clip was pertinent. Like I had to have a deep carry clip to make this knife functional. I was not going to risk having half the knife sticking out in my back pocket. If I carried this in the front pocket or something, if I was right-handed, I totally probably would not care as much about where that clip was placed. But back pocket, I just didn't want it to like fold out or, you know, it's very exposed. Um, that's a personal thing. But for me in the back pocket. I didn't want that. So I threw this clip on as soon as I could and it's worked great. So, um, with the clip, it changes the knife. Uh, it really does help it. And ergonomically, I guess I didn't talk about that. The clip left-handed, which I am, it doesn't bother me at all, right? Right-handed, you do feel that, you know, fold over a little bit, but the trade-off is totally worth it. Now that's up to you if you're right-handed, obviously. Um, 
All right, so that's cutting, carry, uh, ergos, action, sounds. Sounds are pretty good. I mean, I give it a 6 out of 10. Maybe a 7. It comes out with authority. Um, and that's, you know, it is what it is. It's not great, but it's not bad at all, right? Um, action. So this is where uh, it's pretty interesting for me, right? The thumb studs on this are fantastic. I love these. They're very much like the ones on the Barber from Berg Blades that I had. Um but they have a flat top instead of a rounded top. They catch your finger much better. They don't hurt. It's very well done. Um, the detent on this knife is perfect for the uh, deployment. I'm hoping it's good for a hole as well. You can see it shoot out of there. Snaps in. Uh, I've rarely failed it. And if I have, it's an accident like slipping off the stud or something. It thwacks out. Thwacks out. Um, yeah, it's very good. You just obviously get under it, vertical flick, you're good, reverse flick, bang. Left-handed, this bolster lock version is perfect. I mean, the way my fingers land is just like that. It works great. I'm not getting up onto the lock bar at all to, to you know, to get it. I can get it down here and bang it out, right? No issue at all. Very good. Um, and then right-handed, same thing, thumb flick. And reverse flick is money. Now, it doesn't quite drop. Now, I have not tried swapping. Uh, see, I do miss that stud occasionally. And most of that is because my thumbs are all callous. Um, there's nothing to catch, really, right? I've never missed it with the reverse flick. Um, what was I going to say? The clothes. So, I haven't tried skiffs or anything in here. And I've heard that helps a good bit. Uh, it also has that acid wash that needs obviously the coating it probably needs to wear in a little bit on the detent ball um this is the only example i've seen but it's a very kind of slow drop and then shake down it's not it's not the most drop shut so to speak it's more of that hydraulic feel uh, i don't feel a ton of like grit or anything like that really nothing um you know it's good it's just a different sort of action which is fine. Um, it's not quite like we're talking Chris Reeve here and we got to slow roll it and, you know, slow roll it close and everything. It's definitely way better than that. But it's not like the Raptor where I just get out of the way and she drops, right? It's going to be a little different. But we'll see how it is once I get my own and put skiffs in or whatever. Maybe it'll be a little bit better. But honestly, I really like it. It's a good feel um it's very it's very satisfying the way this knife is set up in the action department so uh i'm good with it so overall i really like this knife uh it has a couple caveats with the clip obviously um which is you know a pretty big deal and the steel for some people not for me uh it's actually kind of a refreshing thing to see s35 on a riot made knife like this so that's the Lucas P from Wear Knives. Really, really enjoy this knife. All right. Next up, we have the Hogue slash Sig Sauer K320 in S30V steel. This is a user knife for my buddy Casey. And I got to say, people love this knife. They rave about it all the time. It's such a good value. Uh, the, the plastic feels, you know, uh, like way better than it is. Um, it's a great work knife, whatever, right? Um, it's fine. I don't have any big gripes for it other than um, I had to get used to the closing. And now that I am used to it, you can see I'm nailing it every time. I did have an issue at first where it was kind of slipping out of my palm like that, but I've learned to kind of tuck it and kind of grip the clip to hold it down in place. Um, so it's much better now, but occasionally it does slip out. Uh, but I do really like this knife. So let's get into it. Aesthetically, it's kind of ugly, right? It's kind of tactical looking. Uh, kind of looks like it wants to have a combo edge, right? Um, the clip is sort of aggressive. It looks like a cheese grater. Maybe it's like a tactical cheese grater if you ever need it. Uh, but it is a reversible clip. It is 
FRN or plastic with this kind of, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it on there. Grip on there. Ah, shit. What do they call it? It's not knurling. It's, um, God damn it. Dimpling. Stippling. Stippling. Sorry. It's, I'm thinking of gun grips. Um, and then it has this hole for deployment, right? But anyway, um, aesthetically, it's okay. It's kind of tactical. Not my thing, right? But, you know, to each their own. Ergos. Back here in this grip, pretty dang comfortable. I do feel that clip a little bit. Uh, I still don't know why they put that cheese grater on there, but it's okay. It feels pretty good. I'm pretty locked in back here. And then we have a choil. And yes, yes, this is great up here. feel very comfortable up here, kind of sliding up onto this spine. I do wish they had maybe not done this wedge because it'd be nice to have a flatter area up here for my thumb instead of uh, a more like pointed area. It's kind of an apex up there or whatever. But it feels pretty good. I can feel this gap right here between the scales digging into my finger a little bit. But I'm that's if I'm really bearing down. Um, so I think the Ergos are quite good on this knife. Um, you do have this little bit of sort of jimping here on the back, which is, you know, these are the liners, I guess, holding in the, uh, axis style lock, able lock. And they're a little bit sharp, you know, they're kind of catching. I can feel my skin kind of coming off there. Not my favorite, but I don't really end up there unless I'm doing this kind of grip for something, which I'm not doing a lot of this stabbing stuff because, you know, um, I've retired my Friday night gas station fight glove. So, um, it is what it is. Ergos are good. Carry. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a deep carry clip. I've carried this a few times. Front left pocket. Uh, it disappears. It actually goes past the scale just a touch. So it disappears in pocket. It's It's got some heft to it, to be honest. But you got to see the size of the blade. You're getting a good uh, blade length. And it's a good size knife, right? I feel like this would be a really good knife to use with gloves or something. Um, it carries well. It's not super thin this way. It's kind of tall, right? Um, it's pretty relatively thin this way. Um, it carries fine. I carry a lot of stuff in my front left pocket. Uh, I mean, I don't carry a lot of stuff in my front left pocket. I basically carry chapstick. This is uh, lip butter mango chap lip lip balm so i mean i don't need to reach in there like crazy and i can always just kind of go in and squeeze the chapstick up and out no big deal um so carry's good cutting it's s30b um it feels very thin um, i've cut a few things had no issue the edge on it is i'd say a little janky um because I think it's a user from Casey. And he probably didn't have time to touch it up before he sent it. It seems to get a little janked up, like, right about here. I don't know if there's any chips in it. It feels like there might be a couple. Um, but obviously, if you just want to cut something, no problem, right? It's not going to be an issue. Again, in our actual day-to-day... We're not sitting there cutting paper like that, right? Now, I do cut paper. I cut shipping labels, but that's more of a tip kind of process. That's not me using the edge a lot. It's not slicing like that through paper, right? That's more for cardboard. And a, an edge does not need to be as perfect for cardboard, in my opinion, than it does to make paper look good slicey, right? Uh, slice through paper as well. So, you, you know. Uh, this would work fine for cardboard. I didn't hit any cardboard with it. Uh, I think I opened a, f a few packages from Amazon and other knives. Um, I cut the paper, obviously. I cut a couple shipping labels out. It's a drop point, and uh, I get you know pretty good angle on it to get to the tip. And it does do a good job on shipping labels. I think I got through two or three. Um, just by putting normal pressure down, not the best ever, but certainly serviceable. That's pretty much average. Um, so yeah, the blade is pretty good. Again, check with Casey on this, check with, uh, Neves knives. I know they both have this knife, uh, Wayne Shartwell, they all have this knife and, uh, they all rave about it. So check with them on like long-term hard use type information for the cutting. That's not my, um, 
that's not my sort of forte, guys. Uh, it's S30V, which is a great steel. I love S30V. I've always liked S30V. Um, they arguably like it more than S35, but maybe not lately. I think I'm on the S35VN side now. Um, I was cutting carry ergos. Oh, we can talk about sounds. It, it sounds like a knife that has plastic handles and an axis lock. Not my favorite, but not the worst either. Um, you know, I'd give it maybe a 5 or 6 out of 10. Centering is uh, pretty damn good. Um, pretty damn good. Maybe slightly off to the clip side. In terms of play, we have none. We have the slightest bit of lock rock, but with an axis lock, it's a little different. It's not really lock rock. Um, all right, let's talk about action. So the detent on here with the able lock, eh, not very strong, right? You're not going to get a traditional detent. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of, say, the shark lock with Demco. You got to just give it the gas when you flick it and it will shoot out. Thumb flick is a little better. Um, comes out of there a little better, right? And then obviously you can slow roll it. So I like having the hole. Um, usually thumb studs are better for an action style lock, but you know what? This works pretty good. Uh, it's like anything, guys. Once you get used to it, it does a great job, right? So overall, I think this knife is good. I mean, you can see no play or anything. And hold on, sorry. And I mean, just a little tip and she comes down. Uh, overall, I think this knife is good. I think it'd be a great sort of work knife. I, I don't know the price, and that would really dictate um, my recommendation on it. If this is a, you know, $100 knife, okay. Anything uh, above that, it's a little bit questionable. Uh, it is American-made, but it's S30V and plastic handles with steel liners, so... You know, charging 150 or 120 for this is a little steep. So I don't actually know the price. So again, if it's uh, around $100, I think that's a good price for what you get here, um, especially American made, right? So that is the Hogue slash Sig Sauer K320. Next, we have the Hogue Deca, another one from Casey. Good buddy, Knives Fast. And uh, this one, I'd say I like a little more than that K320. Um, and I kind of went back and forth on this one. If you saw my first impressions and then saw my bug out video, you'll see that I kind of was digging this. And then I got to handle the bug out again. And I was like, nope, bug out's better. And it is, guys. The bug out is better. But that's a personal thing. And I explained that in those videos. This is about the Hogue Deca and this is a version two Hogue Deca. And guys, it's a good knife. Like, yeah, it's a good knife. Uh, aesthetics. I think it's pretty good looking. I wish they did. Um, I don't know if they do. I'm pretty sure they don't just do solid scales. Be cool if they just did a solid black or a solid, you know, blue or something. But they do this G Mascus, which for me kind of cheapens it a little bit. But again, to each their own. It is G10, which is nice compared to a bug out coming in FRN stock. But now the bug out comes in all types of different versions, right? Uh, this is in uh, CPM 20 CV. It has a coated blade. Uh, and it has a deep carry clip, which is cool. So again, aesthetically, I think it's nice. It comes in a warning as well. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I just don't love it, if that makes sense, aesthetically. Um, I'm sort of more of a fancy guy, if that makes sense. Like, I like titanium. You know, I like, a, a, I like some nice milling like that. It's just... You know, I'm kind of past, personally, past the G10 and sort of FRN uh, design kind of language, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's still okay. Ergonomics, this is where this knife falls short for me personally. It just does not fit my hand right. Um, it has sort of a swell here, and then it's pretty neutral, but I don't know. It just doesn't quite feel perfect in my hand if that makes sense 
Um, so I wish it was a little more neutral here all the way through. I get it. They're trying to di differentiate themselves from the bug out. So it's sort of a, uh, a necessary evil, but I don't know. I would just prefer a neutral handle, but maybe for people with smaller size hands, like a medium or a small, it fits well, or even maybe bigger hands. I don't know. Maybe it's just my hand doesn't quite fit. I'm in between on everything. So ergos just don't work for me. Um, you can do a pinch grip. And again, it's sort of a drop point clip point. So you got to lean up a little bit, but it worked great for shipping labels. No problem. This has a fantastically sticky edge from Hogue. Um, it's literally going to just like whisper through here. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, cutting is great. It's a flat grind. Um, feels really good. And it's nice and thin as well. Nice thin stock. Uh, excellent in that category. The clip. Oh my God. I love this clip guys. Um, absolutely love it. I wish they recessed the screws, but that's my only complaint. This is one of my favorite deep carry foldover clips I've ever, uh, carried like hands down. It might be my favorite. It's just so well done. Um, they nailed it. They plateaued it here. So you don't have a hot spot. Um, the only downside I have with this clip, other than the screws not being recessed, well, there's two. One, they didn't, um, I don't know why, but you can see it doesn't fill that whole cutout. It like, zoom in. See that? I don't know why they did that. I think they decided to put this clip on it after they'd already done the scales or something they were like hey we need a deep carry fold over clip i don't know that's all i can think of and maybe some of the newer ones uh have you know a, a more accurate cutout there right um yeah and then the only other thing that bugs me is the screw hole location you can see when you're looking at it dead on you have to go in with your driver on an angle up which can definitely lead to stripping screws and also to marring the finish up here because you're going to be putting that bit against it. Um, so those are my two downsides with the clip. But the the positive much outweighs the negative. It's such a good carry. Uh, retention's great. It looks good. It feels great in pocket. It's a super lightweight knife. Uh, it's a thin knife in all aspects. Just absolutely uh, a wonderful knife to carry. Um, so that's, uh, pretty much everything, but sounds and action sounds. So sounds are pretty good. I mean, it sounds like a G10 knife with an axis lock, which is fine. Um, uh, better than the plastic one. Uh, not quite bug out level because you don't get as much of a thwack behind it. See how much work I have to do to get it to thwack out. Um, so it doesn't have that, but it still sounds good. I'd give it a five or six out of ten. Man, I'd give it a six, right? Uh, action. So here, same thing on this one with the detent. Just not really there. You know? Um, but these studs are fantastic. They grip really well. They catch really well. So you are going to flip this thing. When you go for it, you just do. It's awesome. Uh, I really like it. It's on washers. You can one one finger, sorry, that's what she said, the lock and drop it. Or you can two finger it, whatever you want to do. It's on the wolf springs that they use. It's just really good. It's good and fidgety. Uh, I really have no complaints other than I wish it hammered out a little more. But that's sort of just a personal preference. It's not a necessity of any kind. And these studs are so good. I love these studs. It's such a fidgety knife, as you can tell. So yeah, guys, I could recommend this knife all around, except if the ergos don't work for you. It's just, I would not carry this uh, if I owned it. I would sell it. I just, I, I can't get over the ergos. They just don't work for me like they do on that K320 or the bug out. Um, so if they make a larger DECA or a more sli like streamlined neutral DECA, I'm in. 
Um, I absolutely love the platform. I love the build quality. I mean, I love the materials. I love the price at around 150. Uh, I think it's an absolutely great knife. I just think if the ergos work for you, it's fantastic. If they don't like me, well, you just have to pass, right? So that is the Hogue Deca version two. And then we have two more. We have the Kaiser Latman. So this is one I got in from White Mountain Knives as a loner. And I got it because NAF Sergeant was raving about it. And I see why he raved about it. But I also hate this knife. So this knife kind of sucks. And I will explain that. Um, it's a frame lock. And that frame lock is huge. Look how wide it is. Uh, and then it's a front flipper, a back flipper, and look how sharp these flipper tabs are. They're absolutely the pokiest flipper tabs ever. Um, and that makes a big problem, right? So aesthetically, I like how it looks closed. I don't really like this line down the middle, but... Whatever, this is titanium it's listed as, but it feels like aluminum. So, I mean, it could be aluminum, I guess. Maybe they could, I forget. But I'm pretty sure they list it as titanium, not aluminum. Um, it just feels cheap. It does. It just doesn't feel like quality titanium uh, or aluminum, honestly. I, aluminum can be really good. Um, do I have the box? I do want to check, I guess. Kaiser, Latmond, three and a half inch designer gauge, titanium handle, there you go. So they list it as titanium and it feels like, I don't, it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel good. That's all I can say. Uh, it doesn't really feel like steel or aluminum. It just doesn't feel like good titanium. Um, there's that, and then open, it's a spear point blade. I think it looks pretty good. I like the design overall. Uh, it said Gage was the designer, so shout out to Gage there. Uh, you have a crown spine, which is nice. A satin blade, this is S35 VN steel, which is cool. Uh, and it has this cool milled clip. So overall, I like the design, right? Uh, ergonomics, it's very neutral. It's very thin, but it's very neutral, very comfortable. You can kind of choke up on this flat right here, and um, you can hold it very close up here. You can pinch grip it, but it's such a long blade that it's just really awkward, right? So I'm holding it back here to do labels, and I'm not getting great control because of that. I'm so far away from the tip that I'm kind of like you know, swerving my cuts and everything. It just wasn't great for cutting shipping labels. Um, uh, now for getting into an Amazon package or something, it's pretty good, but you just have a long thin blade and you don't have great control of it because of the way the ergos are. So don't love that. That's for sure. Uh, that kind of went into cutting there a little bit. It has a full flat grind. Um, uh, it's pretty thin. It's pretty slicey. They did a good job on the edge. Um, I wouldn't say it's the thinnest thing behind the edge, but it's pretty damn good. And for my purposes, it's going to do everything I need, right? Uh, no issues there. There is a little bit of lock rock. I want to point that out. Um, there's no blade play, though. So, uh, carry, again, perfectly milled clip. Uh, I did not have any issues carrying this. Pops in pops out if anything it's light on retention but it worked great for me i carried it in my back left pocket where i carry right hand knives and uh it did a great job back there really no issue didn't fall out didn't slide nothing none of that stuff right um so let's talk about the action because that's where this knife is supposed to shine right and again my issues with it all go into this frame lock it's such a wide frame lock on such a thin handle that it's so easy to lock it up and if you lock it up this flipper tab will make you pay you will suffer if you try to go 
and your thumb is on this lock bar. If you're putting pressure on the lock bar to try it, oh my God, look at how pointy this thing is. Let me zoom in so you can get a really good idea of that. Look at that. It's just a sh corner right there. And then up here, same thing. And that jimping ends right there. It doesn't go up and around, so you can easily miss this. And then you're going right over that hot corner. Uh, it's just an absolute nightmare, in my opinion. And I've just hurt myself so many times flicking this thing. Because you have to literally be looking at the knife to like make sure you're not doing anything dumb. Uh, right-handed, you have the frame lock right here, so you can easily lock it up, and then you're going to hurt yourself pulling down on this, right? Right-handed, again, on the frame lock when you do the front flipper, can't flick it and pff, slide right over that thing. Left-handed right here is just terrible, where I put my thumb. It's so natural to be right here. There's not a good spot to kind of slide over to. See, I just did it, even though I wasn't even on the lock bar. Um... Then the lefty uh, front flip is fine because you're not anywhere near the lock bar. Um, I haven't missed and fucked myself up that way. Um, but I've just had way too many, like, ow, instances with this knife that it's just not fun. Now, I will say the action is fantastic. This thing basically, it does drop shut, right? It's really good. It's dead centered. All that stuff is excellent. The detent perfect it uh it's one of the first knives that has like the front flipper back flipper thing that's what interested nav sergeant and that's what got me to want to try it because he was so adamant that this thing was awesome and i could see if you <laughs> see i just i don't know i could see if you didn't have these issues why you would like it but they just needed to do something about the flipper tabs if they made them more comfortable and maybe just made it a liner lock, it would be an amazing knife, uh, really. Uh, I think a mini version, which they have, makes more sense, right? Because you're going to oh, you're gonna have more control of that blade to pinch grip and all that stuff. A three-inch version would just be so much better, in my opinion. And uh, I've seen the three-inch. It is a liner lock. That's awesome, but it's N690. Um that's why I didn't get one. It has the Iron Man theme and everything. I think there's a Mini without that. So maybe there's a Mini without N690. I don't know. But I would say if they did a Mini with a liner lock, I would probably want to check it out because uh, they do have one. So I do kind of want to check it out because I do like the platform. I like the design. I just, I don't know. I still don't love the flipper tabs, but if I didn't have to worry about getting you know, stuck on it, then I think I'd be okay with it. So that's the Latvin from Kaiser. I, it was kind of one of those I was hoping was good, but it just didn't go that way. And last but not least, the CJRB. More my Leah, guys. I love this thing. Spoiler alert. Aesthetically sexy. So sexy. It kind of gives Evo vibes. Got that reverse Tanto sheep's foot blade. I love the green G10 with the gold accents. And earlier I said I'm kind of over G10. And I sort of am. But if it's a $50 knife, come on. You know what I mean? You got to have... You got to have your kind of baselines there, right? I still like budget knives. It just needs to be done right. Um, and I love this colorway. And then you have this stonewashed blade, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is a swags design. And one thing I absolutely love is that it is a uh, AR RPM9 steel knife or blade, which is awesome. I love that steel. Um, it, I just have no qualms with it. I don't even like, I wouldn't even mind it on more premium stuff uh, because I'm not that worried about edge retention. I just love the corrosion resistance and it has decent edge retention, right? Um, it just does everything I need pretty well, which is perfect compared to a lot of the steels you see on knives at this price range. Um, so aesthetically, I really like it. Look at that pivot collar. The pivot itself is like this rounded, bulbous sort of thing. It's awesome. Um, no play, no rock. And I've had this for, I don't know, over a week at this point. And it's just been getting better and better. I haven't taken it apart or anything. I'm just letting it go, right? 
Um, I love that it has a reversible clip too. And this clip is excellent. Recessed screws. The clip is not, but I've had no issues with it catching. It's very thin too, the clip. I like it. I've been carrying it front left pocket literally every day since I got it. Love this knife. It's on thumb studs too, by the way. Ergos. So this is something you get used to. Uh, it really reminded me of the Nimble, which I don't have right now because I'm sending it around in a pass around. Uh, but it has this sort of hump right here, right? And it has this gap. It's sort of a different shaped handle and a bowl back here. So at first you're like, oh, this is weird, right? But it's just like the Nimble where once you get used to it, you love it. And I do. I absolutely love the Ergos on this. Now, I'm never going to hold it back here. You could, I suppose, but I can just get three fingers on i'm up here in this choil all day and i love it it cuts absolutely phenomenally with this ar rpm 9 um, it's just an excellent knife in terms of all the things i like right um so ergos are good cutting man i mean look how tall the blade is you get this saber grind right and it comes down to what i think is a really thin edge um, I've really enjoyed cutting with this and I have cut with this a good bit. That's one thing I really like when I get budget knives in that I like. I tend to use them a lot because they're in my pocket and whenever something comes up, I go to this knife instead of pulling out my Satori 2.0 or, you know, some, whatever else is in my pocket that's 400 plus dollars. I don't need to worry about this because it's 50. It makes me want to just use it. Um, and this thing slices through tape like a beast. It's got a good angle on it for me, the way I pinch grip it, that I can get down, turn it sideways, get under that flap on the cardboard and just like fantastic. Uh, so I cut through like a bunch of fucking packages with this thing. Um, uh, I had to open a dog food thing and cut the whole bag off and all that shit. Um, that was great. Um, I think I cut up some fruit with it. Yeah, I cut up uh, an apple and a banana with it. Um, ooh, what else did I do? I, I think there was a little bit of cardboard out because we had a bunch of stuff I had to take to the recycle. Normally, I avoid that, like the plague. I shove everything into a box, throw it in the recycle. Um, but I couldn't fit everything, so I had to cut down like one or two boxes. I did that. Um, shipping labels excellent for shipping labels too because of this sheep's foot reverse tanto blade you can and the ergos the way this is curved you kind of can climb up and you get your fingers down in here right and it just feels really comfortable to do a pinch grip with like this and then you have that tip bang right there uh i think i got through three labels with this uh it didn't quite cut through the full third label i don't think uh or is that a different knife I forget, but it did well, um, and that's me just testing the tip. Like, I don't put extra pressure down. I kind of just, right, and cut to see how far it cuts. Some knives are, like, so freaking, I don't know if it's sharp or the weight of the knife or what, but some knives will go through, like, five, no problem. Some go through one. I don't know what it's all about, but that's why I kind of do it, just to see. Uh, so cutting is phenomenal and you have this stone wash blade so you're not going to hold wear right it's going to look good um i really like that um carry fantastic again front left pocket deep carry clip reversible bang i'm getting uh i'm going to try to put the artisan clip on here the titanium one see if that works because that would be kind of cool to pimp it out a little bit uh ba -ba -ba -ba. sounds Yeah, sounds are excellent, guys, and it's because of the detent. It's just so good, and the steel liners and the milling in there, whatever the the construction makes it really thwack out in person. It's a it's an eight out of ten for me, guys. There's no rattle or anything, which makes it even better. Action. That's where this knife absolutely shines, guys. I mean, you have thumb studs and a front flipper, so you get the thumb flick. And it's a liner lock, so no lock bar issues. You get the reverse flick. And then you get a nice, satisfying front flick. And this detent is so good. 
You hear that? Ah, it's just so good. Left-handed, same same thing, right? It's the same either way. It's just the lock needs to push this way. Um, if I had to give you a negative, it's easy to disengage left-handed, really, because there's no jimping on it, but you just kind of slide it over. Right-handed, it's a little... You know, you got to use the corner of your finger a little bit. I tend to. Sometimes I slip over it because it doesn't have that jimping or anything there. Uh, Lockup's pretty good. No issue there. Uh, I do like to do this move. Shout out to Brandon Ziegler or Optimus Crime on YouTube. Uh, so there's just a lot of ways to fidget with this knife. And that's what I've been doing with it. Uh, it cuts extremely well. It fidgets extremely well. It carries extremely well. It's a great size, fits in your hand very well, and it looks really good, and it sounds awesome. It literally is just, if you go down the list of my categories, it's just check, 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 and it blows them all out of the water. I mean, this thing, it's funny because I saw the Mylea, and I just wasn't interested because of the size, right? Uh, and I'm like, you know, budget knife, whatever, like, you know, tiny budget knife. But then I kept seeing this knife. And shout out to Bees Blades, Brian over there. Go check out his channel. He's the one who kept raving about this until I finally ordered one. I was like, all right, I'm going to get one and just fucking prove this guy either right or wrong. And man, did it prove him right. This thing is amazing. So if they still have them, Go over to White Mountain Knives and pick one up. Uh, you can use my code LEFTY10 at checkout for 10% off and free shipping in the United States. I think Brian Bees Blades also has a code. I don't know if it's uh, Bees10 or Bees Blades, something like that. If you follow him and you get one of these, I suggest using his code because he's the one who told me about it. So let's give him the credit, guys. I absolutely... Love this knife. So that's the more Mylea, guys. That's all of them. That's five not rapid reviews. It took 47 minutes, but what are you going to do? I love you guys. Let me know what you think about all these knives. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.